Okay, so obviously I didn't post a video or go live during the assassination attempt because I'm not a political streamer. We cover philosophy and pop culture here and politics is very important, obviously. And I think that it impacts our lives on multi, you know, on multi levels. So this is obviously impactful for a lot of people. I think for those of us with conservative family members, it's kind of scary thinking that they could be at a rally and might end up being unalived in a weekend. Like that's pretty horrible. So my heart goes out to the families that were impacted by the shooting without a doubt it is devastating to have the news that your father was killed during a political event and so my heart does go out to the family regardless of a political differences obviously we would never wish harm on fellow citizens in this context i think some of the things that i've been seeing about the dad that was killed the firefighter i think obviously goes without saying has been pretty deplorable, but in general is like very human. So like humans are gonna human. That's what we say here on this channel. But I think, you know, reading from his family and hearing people talk about him who knew him, I think it's important to remember that even though you don't agree with his politics and you might not like the tweets you've seen that he's made, that's someone's dad and that's someone's partner and that's someone's father and sibling and cousin and son, that's somebody's family member. And so it's pretty freaking sad that he died at a rally. I know they say he was shielding his family, even if he wasn't, he died unnecessarily at the hands of somebody who who knows this shooter's like particular motivation for doing what he did but ultimately he was willing to risk people's lives and that's pretty awful you know my thoughts do go out to the family not that it matters because i'm some random streamer but i just thought of my own family you know a lot of my family votes trump obviously <laughs> I vote liberal, they vote Democrat, or they vote Republican. I understand we have differences, but obviously that gives me intense anxiety. And thank, I thank the Lord my parents don't leave the house because I would be devastated if my dad went to a Trump rally and ended up passed away. Like, that would just be horrible. So I don't appreciate hearing from people who had pretty bad things to say about somebody dying like that. I think that's pretty bad. What? That's why, that's so why what? conservatives deserve absolutely zero sympathy for anything that happens as a result of their rhetoric. That's it. It's so, it's so easy. Like, okay, it's but, so uh, simple. Okay, but I'm not exactly sure what he's talking about, but I would say this is the type of person that the internet has broke their brain, thus leaving them with very little empathy for their co-human. I mean, a good, decent father uh, is now dead because of this. He's had his brains blown out because he was defending his wife and daughter. I would hope that you have a little empathy well, for actually, that. I, I can, well, I can, I can, deserve well, that. Well, let me, yeah. jump, let me jump in there because we have a clip of what Destiny has said about that very thing let's listen to this fuck it fuck the dude um the firefighter guy uh fuck trump fuck the people that support him i just want you to know okay just in case you're confused or it seems like i'm uh you don't whatever if one of you were in the crowd and you're a conservative fan of mine and you end up you know getting blown away or whatever the fuck i'm making fun of you the next day on twitter i am 100 percent. i mean I, I gotta say i just found that repulsive destiny I, I wish that you, I, there is no room. There is no room for the hand wringing. And I will, ne I will not participate in oh, this anymore. Oh, it's not hand wringing. The hand wringing. No, it's no, not it hand -wringing. absolutely is. No, it's let me just ask you this, Destiny. You, you were asked on that clip we played earlier, if you'd have the same attitude, if it was your parents who'd been killed at a Trump rally, and you replied, it's less end of life costs for me, would I lose sleep over it? No. Do you understand how grotesque that sounds? It, do, it sounds grotesque, but the environment that we're in right now is grotesque. With that said, I feel the same way about Trump. I got a major ick watching people wish death upon a person that they disagree with. Because fundamentally, we all disagree with each other. And yes, even though a lot of us are voting away in different ways, our civil rights, I don't wish death on anybody. I am not a violent person. I never wish death. When we say things on this channel, like the world would be better without homophobes, we don't mean the lives of the homophobes who ex exist today shouldn't exist. We're saying in the future, it'd be nice if people learned not to be homophobic. So for people to think that it's okay that these people's lives don't matter as much because they're homophobes or because they vote for Trump, like those, that's not, those morals are not compatible with the civilized society in my opinion. Now, ultimately, we have a difference of opinion when it comes to morals. And if you vote Republican and you vote anti-LGBT, you are in so many ways voting against my civil rights. I still don't think you deserve to die. It's not within my values to wish death upon people. It is within my values to say, I hope you all grow this perspective and I hope you realize you're impacting a real person because you are impacting people's lives. Same with abortion rights, same with bodily autonomy. At the end of the day, as Americans, we should want freedom for each other. And when you vote anti-abortion, when you vote anti-LGBT, you're voting away people's civil rights and civil liberties. And in the same way, I'm pro-Second Amendment because responsible gun owners shouldn't be persecuted for irresponsible decisions. I think it's really sad that people were celebrating the possibility of Trump dying or celebrating the, the celebration of a person dying. I just think that's really gross. 
and they know it's gross. And honestly, I think people are probably in their feelings and they probably don't even mean it, but you should watch what you say because it's really gross. Because ultimately, like, I don't know where you get off thinking it's moral to wish death upon people that you disagree with. Like, that's, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore, okay? <sighs> I didn't watch Biden make his speech at the Oval Office, but I would like to watch it. So if you guys would watch it with me, that'd be pure to gape. I just want to hear what the president has to say. I've waited to watch it so I could watch it with you. I speak to you tonight about the need for us to lower the temperature in our politics. And to remember... Oh, we may disagree. We are not enemies. Mm. We're neighbors. We're friends, co-workers, citizens. And most importantly, we are fellow Americans. We must stand together. Yesterday's shooting at Donald Trump's rally in Pennsylvania calls on all of us to take a step back. Take stock of where we are, how we go forward from here. Thankfully, former Trump is not seriously injured. I spoke with him last night. And I'm grateful. He's doing well, and Jill and I keep him and his family in our prayers. We also extend our deepest condolences to the family of the victims who was killed. Corey was a husband, a father, a volunteer firefighter, a hero, sheltering his family from those bullets. Mm. We should all hold his family and all those injured in our prayers. Earlier today, I spoke about an ongoing investigation. We do not know the motive of the shooter yet. And I think this is, don't know I'm going to pause it. Hold on. I think that's really important. I, I'm going to be real with you. Uh, from what I saw about the shooter, I am i don't feel like it was politically motivated. It felt more like desperate almost. And I think it's sad that when people are desperate, they often turn to violence. And I don't mean desperate in terms of victimizing the shooter. I mean, in terms of feeling trapped. I think a lot of the time when we don't think about it, so many people are in positions and when they feel backed into a corner, it often results in violence. And I think that that's just because people feel threatened. And I'm not saying the shooter felt particularly threatened, but I'm saying like there's there's a energy in what I've seen of him, at least, that feels very much like. Like it didn't feel like a person who was an activist who had like a political stance and was like, I'm going to stand up. It felt something different, like sadder, almost more pathetic. And it's just sad that when put into a position, people choose to like take innocent lives instead of like, I don't know, going to therapy, talking to a priest, talking to somebody. And I think that says a lot. Opinions or affiliations. We don't know whether he had help or support or if he communicated with anyone else. Law enforcement professionals, as I speak, are investigating those questions. Tonight, I want to speak to what we do know. A former president was shot, an American citizen killed, while simply exercising his freedom to support the candidate of his choosing. We cannot, we must not go down this road in America. We've traveled it before throughout our history. Violence has never been the answer, whether it's with members of Congress of both parties being targeted and shot, or a violent mob attacking the Capitol on January 6th, mm. or brutal attack on the spouse of former Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi or information and intimidation on election officials, mm. or the kidnapping plot against the sitting governor, or an attempted assassination on Donald Trump. There is no place in America for this kind of violence, for any violence ever. It's interesting because I know a lot of people were talking about, and look, I took my time really talking about the story, obviously, because I don't stream usually during the weekend. And again, I'm not a political streamer, so I didn't like come on to stream. I know so many, everyone and their mom made a video, which I understand, right? You're getting on top of the views. You want to be in the moment. I get it. I think what I took away from a lot of what happened was sort of, there is a very contextual difference between talking shit when there's no violence occurring and then talking shit when violence is occurring. And so obviously in a situation like this, you want to de-escalate, not escalate. So those advocating for violence or escalating the situation are making the wrong decision. You are not contributing good. Like this is unethical to escalate the situation. Now, obviously in other times, we've seen Trump make Second Amendment jokes about Hillary Clinton. We've seen Republicans make jokes. We've seen Democrats make jokes. Obviously, when nothing violent is occurring, a joke can be a joke. But when there's violence occurring, when somebody has died, this is the time to de-escalate. So very disappointed in people escalating. I've definitely blocked a lot of people this weekend because, again, the ick is just so there. And even Tenacious D, even um, Jack Black had to stop his tour. Happy Trump next time. 
Gas was joking about the assassination attempt on former President Trump. In a statement to USA Today, Black said, quote, I would never condone hate speech or encourage political violence in any form. After much reflection, I no longer feel it is appropriate to continue the tenacious detour and all future creative plans are on hold. That's just, it's inappropriate. Like at the end of the day, if you feel this passionately about another human being, like you need to check yourself. Because ultimately, again, and this is maybe the philosophy of it all, when you're a joyful person, you're not advocating for someone to die. Okay? In self-defense, we protect ourselves. When we are closest to our evil, we think the simplicity of killing a person is within reason. It is not simple to kill a person. Okay? So ultimately, I think we have to remember that if you want to be a more joyful person, if you want to be centered in your values, you have to... You have to understand what that means. And it means when things get bad, you are not tempted to go low. And I think that's really, really important. Okay? I think there's always an appropriate time for dark humor. I think there's always an appropriate time for jokes. 1,000%. But not if it escalates to violence. And so in a situation like this where people are already heated, you don't contribute to the violence. Okay? There's nothing wrong with making jokes about death. There's nothing wrong about making dark jokes. There is something wrong about the timing. This is about timing. And I think that's what's important. And I think that that's the thing that is so confusing to people is like, when is it the appropriate time to make the joke? That's something you're going to have to figure out, but certainly not in the height of the, the, the situation. We can't allow this violence to be normalized. You know, the political record in this country has gotten very heated. Mm. It's time to cool it down. We all have a responsibility to do that. Yes, we have deeply felt strong disagreements. The stakes in this election are enormously high. I've said it many times that the choice in the select we make in this election is going to shape the future of America and the world for decades to come. I believe that with all my soul. Mm. I know that millions of my fellow Americans believe it as well. <clears throat> and some have a different view as to the direction our country should take. Disagreement is inevitable in American democracy. It's part of human nature. But politics must never be a literal battlefield, a God forbid, a killing field. I believe politics ought to be an arena for peaceful debate, to pursue justice, to make decisions guided by the Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. We stand for an America, not of extremism and fury, but of decency and grace. All of us now face the time of testing as the election approaches. And the higher the stakes, the more fervent the passions become. This places an added burden on each of us to ensure that no matter how strong our convictions, we must never descend into violence. Republican Convention will start tomorrow. I have no doubt they'll criticize my record and offer their own vision for this country. I'll be traveling this week making the case for our record and the vision, my vision of the country, our vision. I'll continue to speak out strongly for our democracy, stand up for our Constitution and the rule of law, to call for action at the ballot box. No violence on our streets. That's how democracy should work. We de I will say that this is one of the problems people have, because even people have tried to take me out of context. When I say like children shouldn't be born into poverty, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have children if you're in poverty. It means we should create a better world for kids not to be born in poverty. When I say like it's, you know, it's responsible to have an abortion, better parenting is sometimes having an abortion. I don't mean you should abort or post-abort your children, obviously. People trying to take you out of context are people who are, I think, inherently violent because there's no part of my brain that is moving towards violence. When I say these things, it's about preventing and harm reducing violence. I want to harm reduce. So when people try to take you out of context and they say, oh my gosh, if you're pro-abortion, you wanna murder babies, like, hey, be serious. You're being so unserious. No one is advocating for the murder of children. We understand that because of war and things that happen as a consequence of political action, children are killed. But genuinely, consequences of actions aren't intentions. And now we can have very complicated and nuanced conversations about things like war, which I think war is unethical, right? Or maybe I should say immoral, sometimes within reason ethical, because ethics are about society, right? But I think war is immoral. I think when you go to war, you're going closest to your evil. And yet I believe in self-defense. And this is exactly the conversation I had with Rashad Crenshaw, who's a political commentator, if you guys wanna check him out. But you know, Rashad and I were talking about this, how 
when you seek out violence, you're closer to evil than your joy, right? And evil is a construct. All of these things, morals and everything are constructs, guys. I don't believe in objective morality. So I believe in harm reduction to the best of my ability, though the philosophy of harm reduction is a little separate. I just mean in the sense that you do what's best in the moment to reduce the harm in that moment. And in this moment, the best thing to, redu to reduce harm is to calm everybody down, right? The worst thing to do in this moment is escalate to violence when it's so unnecessary. Because I don't know about you, I don't want to fight my neighbors. I don't know about you, but I care about my Republican family. I care about them and I think they're valuable and I think they deserve to be on the same planet as me. And I certainly think they deserve to be in the same country as me. And I certainly don't want to see anybody hurt my family because you think in some way, shape or form, people who vote for Trump deserve death. Like what a ridiculous stance. Like what a ridiculous and offensive stance. Okay, so I know humans are gonna human, but geez, okay, human a little less, you know. Bait and disagree. We compare and contrast the character of the candidates, the records, the issues, the agenda, the vision for America. But in America, we resolve our difference at the battle box. You know, that's how we do it, at the battle box, not with bullets. The power to change America should always rest in the hands of the people not in the hands of a would-be assassin. You know, the path forward through a competing visions of the campaign should always be resolved peacefully, not through acts of violence. You know, we're blessed to live in the greatest country. And for all those people who say BLM protesters like blow up cop cars, listen to me when I say this, it is a form of violence to blow up a cop car, and yet it is still not killing a person. Killing a person is a different way to express a form of violence. OK, I'm not justifying the blowing up the cop cars, but sometimes, you know, cop car get blown up at a protest. Protests are not necessarily peaceful. That would be ideal, but I'd rather see property destroyed than people. So ultimately, in this situation, people were destroyed. And this is why the escalation of violence is too far. People over property, huh? So tonight, I'm asking every American to recommit to make America so make America. What, think about it. what's made America so special here in America. Everyone must be treated with dignity and respect, and hate must have no safe harbor. Here in America, we need to get out of our silos where we only listen to those with whom we agree, where misinformation is rampant, where foreign actors fan the flames of our division to shape the outcomes consistent with their interests, not ours. Let's remember, here in America, our unity is the most elusive of goal goals right now. Nothing is more, more important for us now and standing together. We can do this. You know, from the beginning, our founders understood the power of passion. So they created a democracy that gave reason and balance a chance to prevail over brute force. That's the American we must be. An American democracy where arguments are made in good faith. An American democracy where the rule of law is respected. American democracy where decency, dignity, fair play, aren't you? Obviously, some of this speech is obviously like, um, it's like an ideal that isn't really happening. And I think we have to remember that. You know what I mean? Like politics is inherently kind of divisive and violent. I mean, certainly the creation of this country was a very violent act, right? It included a genocide. So in slavery and all these other deeply inhumane acts, so I don't think we can separate the violence from the politics in, in every regard, but I think the ideal is what he's saying, even though I don't think the ideal is what's happening. I do think it's the goal, right? So it's not that conservatives are innocent. It's not that Democrats are innocent or anybody's innocent. It's the fact that, you know, it's nice when we've gone too far and we can say, hey, well, hold on, slow down. Now, of course, we've gone too far in so many other ways that I wish we would have this moment with that as well. But because it's on our soil, because it's happening, we're obviously gonna have a more like visceral reaction to things because it happened right here and it feels so much more real, right? And ultimately we are causing a lot of tragedy overseas right now. The United States is absolutely responsible for the deaths of millions of people around the world. And so it's not like we're perfect or exempt, but humans, and I will never ask you to do this, I will never ask you to be perfect. I'm not going to ask you that as a person, right? And I'm certainly not saying that America is perfect, but I think in moments of opportunity to be better, we we should do that. 
And it's not about being better at every, like in the most perfect way, okay? I'm never gonna advocate for people to be perfect. That would be so unfair. But I think this is like a good example of an opportunity to be a little bit better. And I know the temptation is to sink as low as they are, but why? Like why? You know? This is why I say when, you know, you're saying you're a good person is all well and good until temptation comes knocking at your door. A good person doesn't celebrate the death of a random voter in a, in a, in a political rally. A good person doesn't celebrate the woman who was killed when she was run over by the car during that BLM protest. Celebrating the death of your political opponents isn't good, especially not when your political opponents are doing just about the same shit you are. Like at the end of the day, America is this great experiment and we're in the middle of it. And who knows where it will go, but it certainly is a reflection of us as a whole. It is not just for conservatives or Republicans that are at fault for this country. It is everybody else as well. And if you keep acting like you're better than them, well, when temptation knocks, apparently not. Because temptation knocked this weekend to see if you had a soul and you decided to celebrate the death of an innocent person. We owe that to those who come before us, to those who gave their lives for this country. We owe, that to, we owe that to ourselves. We owe it to our children and our grandchildren. Look, let's never lose sight of who we are. Let's remember we are the United States of America. There is nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. God bless you all. May God protect our troops. Thanks for watching. Stay okay. I think ideally, this is like an ideal. We should be the United States of America. United still. But at the end of the day, it must be hard. I'm really lucky that I'm able to try to reach for some version of humanity because I have Republican family that I love. I would choose my Republican Trump voting family over any of you fucking bitches any day because I know them as people. But at the end of the day, they are what I think of when I remember Republicans are people too. <laughs> okay. Contrary to a uh, liberal belief, Republicans are people too. And yes, am I deeply frustrated when they vote against my civil rights? Oh, deeply frustrated, deeply disappointed. And yet I never think violence is the answer, not violence when it comes to their lives. It's not the answer. And I hope they all come to that realization that violence is not the answer. But let's be real. Humanity is still learning as a whole. We're just learning. We're learning slowly. <laughs> Raiders Cat says choosing family over strangers. Bull take. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm such, <laughs> I'm such a rebel. Listen, I was really disappointed with the way some people reacted, but I also don't think they mean it. If I'm going to be real with you, I think people said a lot of inflammatory things this weekend that they don't actually mean, but they feel so deeply wounded by the political process. They feel justified in their pain. Trauma's quite a bitch. And when you feel suffocated and threatened, you will lash out like a hurt dog. I don't think most of the people who are saying very inflammatory things this weekend probably mean it, but I think they're probably too prideful and they're probably doubling down because they literally can't admit they're hurt and they're scared, and they feel kind of stupid. And I think that goes for everybody that felt a little self-righteous on TikTok about the fact that the shooter, quote, missed. And ultimately, look, if you think Trump is a threat to America, then America didn't have the guts to stand up to somebody like him anyways. Trump is not a threat to America. It's a threat to America you want, but America is not anything. America is a country that was founded on a genocide and slavery. America is a country that continuously debates whether or not women deserve rights and representation. America is a country that always goes back and forth with your rights in terms of bodily autonom autonomy or your rights in terms of representation. I don't know what America Trump is gonna destroy, but America is not this perfect thing anyways. So. I don't know what he's going to destroy, this Trump. Like you guys in chat keep saying he's going to destroy America. Just what America? The America that's the experiment? The America that is denying civil rights before Trump anyways? It's not Trump that's going to destroy America. It's the people. And if the people destroy America, hey, I guess that's a choice. I recommend you don't do that. The dilemma is we have very different ideas of what destroying this country looks like. And you have to understand that that is because we are the reflection of the country. Trump is a reflection of us. Biden is a reflection of us. These people are a reflection of us. He's not going to destroy anything. We are. We are. And it is going to be what it is. If the majority of people 
don't want to destroy the country, it won't be destroyed. Okay? Nobody, the minorities don't have enough power in this country. So it's got to be the majority who's making the action. So the result is of the majority. Period. If you don't like how it turned out, you then you have an issue with most of the people. K.O. says, honestly, kind of scared. If Trump had died, the backlash would have been enormous. It would have been pretty scary. I very seriously doubt all these commenters are real in a way who are like, I can't wait for a civil war. Did it, bro, you do not want to fight your neighbor, bro. Like, you do not want to fight your neighbor. Okay? Like, you do not want to go up against your neighbor. That's fucked up to dream of a civil war. I know... Some people might think while well, they're sitting in their like bunkers in the middle of the woods, like, oh, Civil War sounds awesome. Civil War sounds awful. Do you know how bad the Civil War was? It was a horrible, horrible time in America. Discourse said, I honestly never thought I'd feel empathy for Trump. But when I saw the picture of him standing after everything happened, I couldn't help it. I don't know how people can see a bleeding person and find joy in that. I think humans forget that like nothing happens in a vacuum and nothing happens outside of their nature. And everything is in our nature, including violence. And it takes a disciplined person who has a good sense of discernment not to give in to that temptation to wish bad on people just because you feel justified to. I understand the desire to see people suffer because of the way you feel they made you suffer. It's also very unhealthy. Revenge is not the answer. It's just not. Self-defense is very specifically different than actively wounding people because you feel justified in doing it. And if you don't know the difference, you need to figure it out. Cactus says Trump is just a symptom anyway. Trump is a system, a uh, symptom. And look, for a lot of people, depending on their goal, Trump is a leader. For, for you to see Trump and be like, he's taking away our civil rights, understand that those rights that we feel like are civil rights, other people don't think so. And you have to contend with that reality. That if you were born into a different bubble with a different mindset, you might also think that. And if you have a belief system that keeps you within a bubble, you might also think that. Which is why we have to come to a consensus of agree to disagree to some extent. Because realistically, you could just, America could just end up becoming like, you know, a, a very specific like religious country. You know, where it really is just like one nationalist country. I wouldn't like it. But it could happen. And you have to understand that's just because it's a reflection of the majority, which is why you have to get people to understand like, hey, just a reminder, like I'm a person too. And you have to, you know, it's probably better that you fight for my civil rights than not. But how are we going to get people to understand that about each other? I mean, it's really hard to humanize who you think is the enemy. I don't think Republicans are my enemy, but I do think they're very frustrating as a voting populace um, because they they do struggle to embody my lived experience. And to be fair, I understand that, but I really wish they would try harder because people are having a real experience out here and the Republican Party isn't helping them. And so I think that's really important. And I think it's difficult to ask people to embody an experience when we really struggle to do it with our own family members. If you feel very, very, very passionately about this election, then I hope you're canvassing and I hope you're participating in the election. Obviously you don't have to, that's also a form of participating in the election. And anyone who disagrees doesn't actually believe in America because America is about choice and you have a choice to not vote or vote, but you should probably make an effort to get people to understand you, to embody your lived experience. But it is very hard to do that. Just in the same way, it's probably really hard to embody the experience of a homophobe or somebody else because I also struggle. I struggle body the experience of some people. And so how can I ask the world to do it, right? I can only just try my best. Discord says, has living in Croatia given you new insight into American politics? It's made me more neutral to America in a lot of ways. Look, Croatia has its own problems. Every country has its own problems. I mean, I moved to a country that is constitutionally anti-gay marriage. At least in America, it's still legal. But ironically enough, in Croatia, abortion is legal. But the United States is under threat. Everywhere has its people. There's racism everywhere. There's homophobia everywhere. There's misogyny everywhere. No matter where you go in the world, there are problems because there are people. People are the problem. But people are not a problem that can't be solved. I believe in solutions. In case you're new to my channel, I believe in solutions and I'm pretty freaking optimistic. Danny says, I struggle to embody the experience of an irrational person. A homophobe is deeply irrational person. I think it's deeply irrational to think, to, I think it's almost deeply irrational to assume that other people aren't having rational experiences. Homophobes are having 
what they perceive as very rational experiences because they can rationalize their way into a conclusion. It's not always irrational to come to a conclusion that is rooted in bigotry. Bigotry has its own form of rationality that isn't moral according to my values. But if you really can't understand how a person becomes homophobic, like I just don't understand how you don't understand people. That's like saying, how do people do domestic violence? Or how do people do crime? How do minority kids in in underprivileged communities end up in prison at 15? What do you mean? You can't figure it out? I don't know if you guys know this, but when we advocate for marginalized communities to get representation, we're advocating for most likely homophobes and racists because marginalized communities are the least educated and whether they're white or black, tend to be homophobic and racist. If you want to advocate for the poor, you're advocating for most likely a homophobic racist person. Who do you think the poor is? And you know it's true because every data point has shown us how they vote and how they end up being and why those marginalized communities are still very much a problem for their generationally new children who are queer, LGBT in any capacity. God forbid we bring in the non-binaries into this conversation, which is why I believe people can change because I know that people are born into circumstances with a limited amount of information that makes them come to conclusions based off of what they think is rational. They think it's rational to come to these conclusions and you can rationalize yourself into very bad conclusions. I think human life should be protected and I think we should advocate for protecting human life. But given our relationship with prison systems, with killing, killing people in Gaza overseas, with the way some of you feel very confident in hating on Israel, you have to remember you're just hating on people's lives, which you can keep doing, but you can't pretend you got the higher road here. Because at the end of the day, you just, this just people, guys. These are just humans are gonna human. Everybody is biased and prejudiced. You gotta ask yourself, how am I limited? In what ways my bias or prejudice playing a role in my hatred? And maybe I just feel abandoned by the system that was supposed to protect me or abandoned by the world that said it cared about me or abandoned by my communities that can't seem to see me or I'm abandoned by my own fucking family. That is a real, real reality for a lot of us. We have to face that we are going to be abandoned because the system can't support us. And that sucks. That doesn't mean you need to abandon your morals because the system has abandoned you. But you also gotta figure out what your morals are because they're not objective. They weren't given to you by anybody. You've got to figure it out. Even when you're choosing a religion, you're choosing morals that reflect or relate to you. So ask yourself, why am I picking these morals? Why do I think this is what represents good in the world? And then really ask yourself, is this good? Is this harm reducing in some capacity? And then ask yourself when push comes to shove, what are you willing to do when you're faced with somebody that is your opposition? Do you really wish harm on that person just because they vote differently from you? And then you got to ask yourself, why? That's what introspection, extrospection is, is asking yourself why. Why would a person say this? Why, when I hear a person talk, do I think this is what they're saying? Kyle, shout out. Thank you so much for gifting the memberships. It looks like you did two of them. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. My heart goes out to so many people. And at the same time, there are so many people suffering that sometimes we got to pick and choose who we pay attention to. But it is kind of what we are dealing with right now. It's what all humanity has dealt with forever. Ultimately, I know where my morals lie and I know it's immoral for me to wish death upon anybody who's politically opposed and has different views than me. I never would wish harm on you, but I do wish you would realize that my experience is just as valid as yours. And I really wish you would stop voting against my civil rights. That would be really great. <laughs> Okay, that would make family get togethers so much better. A hundred percent better. But I would never advocate for violence. Self-defense is different, but this isn't about self-defense. People are advocating for violence way outside the scope of self-defense, and that is just not acceptable. Micah says, would that also apply to people who tried to assassinate Hitler? This is not a bait, and I'm not comparing him to Trump. I'm genuinely curious. Killing Hitler as a form of self-defense is different right, than assassinating Hitler before he did anything he did. The reason you can't kill baby Hitler is because baby Hitler didn't do anything. And I think that's very important to know in that, like, in that exercise of would you go back in time and kill baby Hitler? You can't kill baby Hitler because baby Hitler didn't do anything. Killing Hitler, who genocided six million plus Jews, is an act of self-defense. Going to war to protect people from a genocide is a form of self-defense. Killing baby Hitler is just murdering a baby. That's what that that's what that question is supposed to ask you. The reason it's like the trolley question. It's supposed to get you to be consistent with your values but also understand how different it was. Like or how difficult it is, right? Like they're, but they're different. 
You can't go back and kill baby Hitler. Like self-defense is different. But I have always had the stance that I think war is sort of petty. War is the war is the result of a lack of an introspective community. The fact that adult leaders can't talk through differences and we have to go to war is just where we are as a species. Da, 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 da.